I totally forgot to wave at the beginning of this video. Sorry about that. Today we're working on a wreath using one of these splatter screens from Dollar Tree. You just take the knob off and you can use it for crafting. It does leave a hole in the middle, so you have to put something over that. I'm going to use this pumpkin, which we're going to have to cut in half. And those tools next to it that I'm pointing at right now, those are going to be absolutely no good. Ideally, you would use a hot knife to do this, but make it work with what you have. I got a glue gun. I've got an assortment of florals. Not really many flowers. I think there's one flower in the end of this. But mostly leaves and some hydrangea, some berries. Need some glue sticks, a glue gun, obviously. This is a piece of jasmine that I pulled out of my fence for just a little natural element. I really like the way this wreath came out. So the first thing we're gonna do is take off the handle and take that bad boy outside and spray paint it. I use gold. I think it would also look good in copper or bronze or the oil rub bronze. The copper would probably be really pretty. So what I'm showing you now is that I have the grid on the screen lined up diagonally so it's not up and down it's slanted each way it's like at a 45 degree angle now here comes this disaster i think this is a pumpkin from the dollar tree not 100 percent sure it probably is it could possibly like hold up a building it is so firm it's so hard i mean you can see this is a brand new blade in here and i am just jamming it in there so, um, maybe try to find one that's not so hard? I mean, I'm thinking this is from the Dollar Tree, but it is of such high quality. It was, it, look, I crack it open like a pomegranate. And now I'm just seeing that this side is the flattest. Because it does have to go up against that screen. And you're going to see that on the back, but I'm going to cover that over with some paper. And I did try to cut this stem in half, but that absolutely in no way was ever going to happen. I would need a power tool. I would need an engineering degree. I don't know what I would need. This pumpkin was... I'm, I'm, let's just be glad I have fingers. So there you go. I was trying to cut it in half so I would have two sides that I could use to make two of these wreaths, but the other side kind of got chopped up when I was cutting it apart. And there I was just clearing out a little extra foam on the back so I can make sure it sits on the wreath. Now I'm just positioning it here. So I can make sure when I start placing my florals, I'm going to put them in the lower, if it was a square, I'm going to put them in the lower left hand corner. And here I am just choosing from the plate of flowers I have over there. For my color palette, I want to use that blue purpley hydrangea because it's one of the nicest florals I've seen at Dollar Tree. It's a really nice color. I really like the way this looks. I'm trying not to go too yellow. And I like that rusty kind of hydrangea that went with it. And now I'm just going to start forming my little side swag thing. I say the bottom left corner because it's looking in the bottom left side of your screen. That's where I'm going to be concentrating. Not, not a half round shape but kind of like a crescent shape. So I'm just sticking in these hydrangeas. I've cut all these flowers up pretty small. I really like this hydrangea. I liked it so much with the orange because they're opposites on the color wheel. So it makes the blue and the purple blue flower look bluer and it makes the orange flowers look a lot more orange. I really wish they'd come out with like an antique green hydrangea because when I was a florist, that's what we were using a lot of in wedding arrangements and it was so pretty. Wedding arrangements, centerpieces, bouquets, stuff like that. These are just some of those styrofoam berries. I always try to get these every year. And inevitably when I go 
there's like 50 of them popped off and broken you can see the styrofoam on the inside i think these look good because they put them out and i literally picked them up and put them in my basket and they have a nice little bit of kind of like a corally color which goes good with the blue and the orange now this is that rusty orange again that i really liked i would have preferred all of the rusty orange but they really only had the hydrangea and whatever that flower was supposed to be. Here's a grapevine ball again. I cut out about five minutes of me trying to get that stuck. It did not want to stay. But I got it eventually. So I'm kind of just working on the bottom now, but I'm trying to keep it somewhat balanced. I want it to be heavier on the bottom because you want that weight at the bottom of anything that you're doing, pretty much. I haven't... Oh, I did add some leaves. The leaves that I picked out are the greener ones from one of the picks I had. Just because there was already so much orange, I thought that the green would play good with the blue hydrangea and the rusty kind of orange. And this is pretty much what it is. I'm just kind of filling up these areas. See, that's the green leaf. I kind of like that. I didn't have enough to do as many as I wanted. I think I only had three from that bush. There's a little Chinese lantern. I think these are the mini pomegranates, which look nothing like pomegranates. What is that? No, that's another Chinese lantern. Dripping Bloom, that's what it said on the on the tag. There's the pomegranates. I guess they kind of do look like pomegranates, but I, I think they're more like crab apple looking. This is that Dripping Blossom again. I think I put that other red piece at the top. I hope I do. Maybe I don't. And now I'm just filling in the other stuff in this little area because I'm going to glue this maroon red chrysanthemum I think it is I don't know sometimes I say what the flowers are sometimes I can tell what the flowers are and sometimes it's just like okay I don't know what that is but I guess it's like a mom get it on there and hold it real good and now see it's diagonal again the lines of the grid are diagonal and I'm just trying to see where I want the pumpkin I know I have to cover up the hole in the middle but I was just trying in other places, but it looks best in the middle anyway. So I'm slapping on a lot of glue and then smashing it down here and moving it around a lot, looking at it a bunch of different ways because I want to get it straight. Spoiler alert, I don't get it straight the way I want it. I end up taking it off after everything's done and fixing it. And I put a little rope hanger at the top to hang it from, but you have to offset it. You can't put it in the center and expect it to hang straight because there's so much weight on one side of the splatter screen whatever it is so you have to move it over to the left some to support it now i'm just tying a little knot in some raffia to give it a little more natural element i'm gonna glue that in that's about it i had a lot of fun with this and it came in a lot better than i thought it was like i had it in my head but i wasn't quite sure but i like it i think it came out really good I hope I remember to wave goodbye. Bye. Thanks, guys. I hope you enjoyed watching this. Please remember to comment, like, subscribe, turn on your notifications, and share with your friends. Let me know what you think down below. Thanks for watching. Hi everybody. Before I get started, I want to say thank you to Jessica from Measure and Mix and Heidi for hosting this challenge. I've been subscribed to Jessica for a while now and through this challenge I just subscribed to Heidi the other day. This was 
a real challenge too. It wasn't something that was easy. I thought it was going to be, but it wasn't. I bought maybe five different things and never really got anywhere with them because it was very difficult. So I have some raffia, some ribbons, clearance ribbons, scissors of course, trusty glue gun. This is some wired twine I found at Dollar Tree. I've never seen this before, but it's got a pretty sturdy wire on the inside. And I picked up some of these grapevine balls. The big storm we had, the hurricane that came through, knocked over one of my pine trees. I collected some pine cones that are everywhere, and that's a piece of jasmine from my backyard. I just stripped the leaves off. And I have a wide assortment of silk flowers. All of these are from Dollar Tree and maybe Walmart, but I'm thinking most of them are actually from Dollar Tree. And here's my thrift store find. I have a traumatic relationship with these because they were very strong. These are the cinnamon scented brums, super strong. And my mom got one one time and hung it on the door to our laundry room. And every time I was in the kitchen or anywhere around that, I got a pounding headache, but I didn't want to say anything because she really loved it. But this one is pretty old and it has no smell anymore. Thank God. So what I'm doing here is creating a floral arrangement on top of the broom so it can be hung on a door or inside. And I'm starting from the bristle end here and working my way up only because I know I want to have it wrap at least three times. The majority of the arrangement is going to be on the left side of the bottom of the broom where the bristles are. So I'm starting at the top on the right side and spiraling down but not wrapping. You'll see that I don't really do it very tightly. And I'm using a pipe cleaner here just to get that on there. I'll use pipe cleaners periodically throughout this, sometimes with glue, sometimes without, especially in places where I want the, the wire and the ribbon to be twisted. The same leaving a little bit of slack so it's not wrapped tightly. I'm going to put another pipe cleaner here to cinch up that ribbon. I had a lot of fun doing this. Didn't have as much fun editing it, but it was fun to do it. And there was nothing I could find. I went to Goodwill for about a week. Every couple of days I went to another thrift store. My Goodwill is terrible. They sell stuff there from the Dollar Tree that's used, and it's $2 at the Goodwill. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. So I had a hard time finding something. There I was just showing you how well this bends. Very cool. I have a Dollar Tree I go to all the time, and I went to one that I don't normally go to. And that's where I found this wired twine. So see, I've just got that kind of loosely around there. I don't want anything wrapped. I don't want it to look like a candy cane. And I'm just gluing that down right where I attach the ribbon. And now I'm taking a couple lengths of this twine. I think it's four. And I just pulled out a big length and then doubled it and then doubled it again. And now I'm cutting it into four separate strips. Glue that at the top and I'm leaving some at the top undone the ribbon, the wire twine, and this this twine here. And I'm leaving some at the bottom too. Because I want it to have nice movement and a nice flow to it. And there I go with the glue gun again. I'm really enjoying this new Gorilla Glue glue gun. I keep saying glue gun, glue gun. And now I'm making a little tassel. It's kind of like a tassel. I just went around my hand a couple times and now I'm going to tie it off. And 
I'm gonna cut the bottom off and kind of mess it up in my hands to fray the ends a little bit. That's just gonna get glued on the top to add a little bit more texture. Now I'm twisting up the wired twine. I kind of twisted it into a pretty tight circle and then untwisted it some and then glued it down. And I didn't want to do too much at the top because I wanted the focus to be on the bristles of the broom. I don't know what that part's called. I don't know if any, is, is there even a name for that? The broom part of the broom, the sweeper. I'm so glad this thing does not smell like cinnamon. I would have been so upset. So now I'm putting another pipe cleaner on. I'm just going to tuck that in and it's going to make a kind of loop, kind of a bow, a suggestion of a bow. I really like these grapevine balls. I want to make a garland with them or something, getting closer to Christmas. They're just, they, they give like such great texture. And I had a pipe cleaner on the back of that one just to give the ball a little bit more grip. Instead of gluing the ball directly to the broom, you glue the ball and the pipe cleaner to the broom and that creates a little bit more um, surf surface tension. Okay, now we're going to get into some flowers here. I trimmed a lot of these down to just the flowers with no stems, but some of them still have stems on them. And up here, I'm just adding a couple of leaves. I don't want to add any big flowers up here because I want your eye to be drawn from the top down. And I, I felt like putting any big flowers at the top would just be too busy. So now there's all my hanging pieces and I'm making another little tail with the leftover ribbon that I cut off. You can see right here all these ribbons are dovetailed. That was a terrible idea. This frayed so bad. I tried to burn it. I cut that out of the video because I'll usually burn a synthetic ribbon to seal it off so it doesn't fray but I don't know if this is cotton or I'd be very surprised if it were cotton but it uh it didn't didn't uh, seal off it just kind of crisped up and I ended up cutting the ends on a angle and that was better and then I just curled up this twine wrapped it around stuck it in between the branches some this is the jasmine from outside that I'm just looping around and tucking in places And now we're finally getting to the best part, which is the flowers and the leaves and the berries and what they call miniature pomegranates, some pine cones that I collected. I'm just making a little bunch right here, trying to get something that looks right. This is going to be my first downward piece, so I'm trying to arrange it nicely in a pleasing visually sort of way. And now that it's together, I'm going to stick it in right there and see that I like it. And I like it, so I glue it. And then I get my whole head into the frame. And now I'm just really arranging flowers. I used to work at a florist for a while. And I learned a lot there about what my style is and it's very very loose just very kind of improvisational I'm not going to count anything out and say I need this many sunflowers I need this many miniature pomegranates but I do tend to work in threes or fives just so nothing's too even I think there's two sunflowers on here in the end and maybe two of those other I don't know what they're supposed to be like chrysanthemums So I'm just adding, thinking of where I need things. And you don't need to have as many florals available as I do. 
but I had some that I bought this year, I had some from last year, I had some from an arrangement I took apart, so I had a lot to work with. And these are the pine cones that I'm just sporadically gluing in here. So they're kind of peeking out, but not really. I had a branch fall from my pine tree, and I usually only get really big pine cones, but these were immature when they fell, so they're nice and small. And I'm just continuing that floral down the left side of the broom, making it a little bit longer, seeing where I need pieces. And it's nice when you get to the bottom there because I was just kind of poking stuff in and it was going in there really good. And we're going to add another grapevine ball. I did wire that in and then I put some glue underneath it before I tightened the wire. Those were very hard to get down. That was the only thing I really had trouble with. Now I'm adding some more leaves. So there you see the flow of it going from the top right to the bottom left. And I gotta apologize for how this video is filmed. I don't have much room to work with. There we go, sticking that in. I really like the way this came out. And I guess if you wanted to, you could add oil to it. I would not. Well, I would. I wouldn't add cinnamon oil to it because I am. I have a very bad reaction to cinnamon every time I either eat it or smell it. And that's about it. I really hope you guys enjoyed this. If you're new here, please consider liking, subscribing, commenting, turning on your notifications, sharing. Oh, all that good stuff. And thanks again to Heidi and Jessica. I hope you guys have a good day and thanks for watching. I just have to give you guys fair warning. This project is exceedingly cute, adorable, fantastic. I love it. It's my favorite thing I ever made. And I wave at the camera a lot and clap, so there's that. Fair warning. Spoiler alert. Hi everybody. I'm making a Halloween banner today, and for my base I started with this gold and silver glitter banner from Walmart for $1.97. It was in the party section. I have some black and purple felt. What else do we have? My glue gun, scissors. These felt stickers from Dollar Tree that are super cute. I have some wood beads, some twine. There are four ghosts, three pumpkins, and 14 bats. So you'd have to get like four packs to get everything. These banners are like super flimsy, but I knew that I wasn't gonna want 14 because there's 14 pennants. Is that what they're called? Flags, whatever we wanna call them. They're, uh, they're very, very flimsy so I ended up gluing two of them together not only to stabilize it a little bit but make sure there was something nice in the background which I would cover up anyway because there was so much glue and extra stuff on the back this is a triangle that I pre-cut it's from Michaels the felt it's creatology and the color is goldenrod it's a kind of mustardy orange yellow like a vintage orange and I'm just putting a little bit of glue on here just to get it down and I made these by cutting the felt about a half inch bigger than the banner and right here my glue gun you can see as soon as I start gluing it down it starts lifting back up because I did not realize right here that my glue gun was on high something I will regret later on when I burn my hands but I, I'm getting ready to turn it down right now there we go turn it to low so I'm just folding its edge in and not worrying about the little tabs that are sticking out. It gives you a nice clean edge right there. Now I have a little bit of a crisis figuring out which side to do next. But it doesn't matter. Just glue and stick them down and just leave those little tabs sticking out. We'll deal with them after we're done wrapping everything. I did not finish the back of mine. 
but if you wanted to, you could cut a piece of paper or another piece of felt that's slightly smaller than your pennant size, the banner size, and just glue that over the glue, the glitter, the turned edge, and just it would clean it up real nice. And again, just leave that tab sticking out. I think it'd be nice to add like a pop color on the back. I really wanted to add green to this, but green felt is just, we have problems with green felt. And now I'm just kind of turning this sideways and cutting these little flaps off. I just put a little bit of glue on each one of these points, let it dry some, cool off, and then I pinched them to make sure they were extra sharp. The glue just kind of stiffens up that edge and it makes sure that it's all stuck down. But I mean, there's so much hot glue in here, it's stuck down either way. And then I'm just trimming the back side of those points again. Like that I even really need to cut that off. And then we have a perfectly wrapped little banner. And then two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's put those off to the side and work on the next part. This is my purple and black felt, obviously. I'm putting some kind of bullseyes on the banners. I just picked up two items off my desk. One was a jar of peanut butter because that's where I keep my peanut butter on my desk. The other one was the bottom of a cup. You just want a bigger black circle and then a slightly smaller purple circle. And you can see that they're on freezer paper here. I hate cutting felt. I, I just, it's a weird consistency. I don't even know if that's the word I'm looking for. It's just, it's, it's hard for me to cut. I don't want to cut with my good scissors. I needed to make a template. I couldn't mark on black fabric. So I drew everything out on a piece of freezer paper, put my iron on a medium setting, kind of like a wool and just iron the paper onto the back of the felt, shiny side down. And what that does is it kind of melts that little plastic on the back of freezer paper, the shiny side, and it temporarily adheres it. And don't go too high because you'll shrink the felt or burn it and the paper will be like really stuck good. So I just kind of passed over it with a warm iron. And you can see why I don't like cutting felt. You see how jagged that, that is right there? And if that happens, see, you just go back and clean it up. Because guess what? Nobody's going to be going up to this thing and measuring it. That's something I have to remind myself all the time, is that nobody's going to be looking at this with a microscope. So I did all the black circles, and now I'm going back and cutting up the purple ones. I did really want to use green. But like I said, the green is just, there's that like pool table green and then like lime green. I thought the lime green was too bright because it's got this like vintage color scheme to the banner and yeah, I'm dancing because I'm so excited about this. A lot of dancing, a lot of hand dancing. It's got that vintage color scheme and those stickers look kind of vintagey to me. Maybe even primitive, that kind of decor style. So, I don't think lime green would have worked. I wanted like an olive, but I just went with this, and I'm really happy I did. So right here, I'm just gluing them down, the circles, and I'm just putting a little dot of glue in the middle because, again, I hate glue strings. So after it was secured, just to make sure it didn't flap around, I went back and added some tacky glue around the edges, pressed it in really good because felt is like spongy. And did all of those and because the hot glue is there the circle is not going to move so we can just work around it until it's dry and completely glued down and I started out doing the same thing for 
the purple circles, but I think towards the end, I'm just like slapping some glue on them and slapping them. Yeah, there you go. Just go all over the place. You could use all hot glue for this. You could use all white glue for this. I just, uh, those strings just, ugh. All right, so I want mostly ghosts, and I want a couple pumpkins. So I have four ghosts, three pumpkins. There's going to be ghosts on each end, and then alternating in between. And I have the 18, no, 14 bats. I didn't take the paper off the back of these because even if these were good stickers, they weren't going to stick to felt for any length of time. And I don't have much faith in stickers from the Dollar Tree. So I just left the paper on glued directly to the felt. These little stickers come in. There's a ghost, there's the jack-o'-lantern, there's a pumpkin, there's really cute witch hats, witch boots, there's owls, there's some like neon colors, so if you wanted like a brighter Halloween look, you could do that and just switch up the colors of the felt, but like I said, there's four, there's four bats in each pack. I needed 14, so I got four packs, which gave me 16 bats, and I have a bunch of other stickers left over. I might try to do something else with them later, and I just love it. I love the way that looks. I love that kind of folky Halloween. I don't really like spooky Halloween. I guess I like spooky Halloween or like scary Halloween. Like I'm fine with a scary movie. Like you ask me what movie I want to watch, it's always going to be a scary movie. But I don't like that for Halloween. I like that more whimsical, fun. But something that's not like skeletons in the ground and graveyards in your front yard. I don't know. I want something that's cute. Right now I'm just stringing my wood beads onto my twine. My twine's still attached to the roll and I'm just gonna put all the beads on there. And to make this a little easier, I did put some hot glue on the tip and then roll it into a little needle. And even though I doubled up the, the little flags, it, it did end up being a pretty big, pretty, pretty long banner, I should say, not really big. For the ends, I'm just wrapping the twine around my fingers and then tying it off to make like a little bow. I did this to be decorative, but also if I needed to adjust the size, I could undo that and make it longer, depending on where you were gonna hang it. Now to get my spacing correct, I took a milkshake straw I don't know why I have it. I don't use straws, but I'm using it just to create a spacer. And the first spacer I make is where I want to start the first banner at. So it's maybe three inches, four inches away from the end of that little bow. I'm just gonna put the glue down and kind of press this in. And I'm pulling across pretty tight because I really want that to get down in the glue. And using my freezer paper right there. And now I need another spacer for how much length I want between the banners and the beads. So I cut a smaller section and then doubled it up, made a, made a matching one. I know those will act as temporary spacers to tell me where to put the next pennant. I had so much fun doing this. Like, I have fun doing everything I do, but this was just... As it was coming together, I was like, oh, yes, that's exactly how I see it in my head. Sometimes I'll start projects and I'll, 
I think I know what they're gonna look like and they look great and then I'm making them and I'm like, what am I doing? What is this? Who asked for this? Nobody. But this was like from the beginning. I was like, as soon as I saw those stickers, I was like, this is gonna be great. And I think $1.97 for this banner was not bad at all. They had another one in the craft section. It was like $6. I was at Michael's the other day getting the felt for this. And they had one that was $10. And I said, no. No. I will spend $2 on the banner. I will spend a dollar on a bunch of felt. Not $10. So now I am just creating another little bow to go on the other edge. This one gave me a little bit of trouble, but I got it figured out in the end. I was trying to make them as even as possible with the other bow, but I couldn't really use the spacer. So that's about it. I, I, I love this, if that wasn't apparent already. See, and I'm just making sure that those are about the same length, and they kind of are, so we're fine with that. Oh no, wait, I need to slightly adjust that. There we go. So, that's it. Made a very cute banner. Again, you could glue a piece of felt on the back. I'm probably going to go back and do that. And what I'm doing right here is, there are glue strings, so I'm getting my little plastic brush. And they came off really easy from the felt. It just kind of pulls everything off and then you pull the glue string out of there instead of trying to pick it off with your fingers or using the hair dryer or a heat gun. So that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed that. If you could remember to like, comment, subscribe, turn on notifications, share with your friends, post on Facebook, pin on Pinterest, tweet it out, add it to your Tumblr, all that good stuff. Or not. Whatever you want to do. You guys have a great day. See you next time. Hi everybody, today I'm working on making over this little shadow box tabletop decor, wall decor thing. I got it for a dollar from the summer clearance at Walmart, but I know they sell something just like this at Dollar Tree. This one's just a little bit sturdier, it has a nicer hook. Um, it's not any better made though because I just ripped this thing off with my giant man hands. It does leave a little glue and probably fiberboard or particle board or whatever that is of the wood behind but I just scraped it up and left it alone. I'm not going to give you any measurements for all this because unless you get this exact one it doesn't matter but I think these strips were about an inch and a half and this is just a faux wood print. Obviously it's faux, it's on paper. And I picked up a little chevron print for the back. I wanted to do kind of neutral fall decor and use that maple leaf from the Dollar Tree. And here's some Mod Podge mat and a dwindling supply of my chalk paint and white. This is a Folk Art Treasure Gold paint. I really like this. I, I have a lot of issues with gold paints. They, they're never what I want them to be. And usually if they are what I want them to be, they're like oil-based and very hard to clean up. And this is an acrylic. I don't know why it comes in a bottle like this instead of a actual squeeze bottle, but pretty good. If I was going to do this again, I would probably run a sealer of Mod Podge over this exposed end grain thing right here because it soaked up the paint. It just ate it up. I think I did about three coats. The inside part is coated with paper right there, so it's going on a little bit better, but that outer edge, it was just a mess. Not a mess, but it, it really soaked up the paint. But I like this because it's not too gold, like a neutrally gold. Neutrally gold, is that even a thing? 
a less warm gold. I don't like yellow golds. So now I have my Mod Podge and I am just painting it on the bottom of this tray and as always, go light or go home. And even though this coat is extra light, I did get some weird bubbles in the bottom and I don't know why. And I'm wiping off the Mod Podge that's on top of the gold just because I didn't want it to dull it down. So just put this piece in, pushed it down a little bit, I gave it a couple of seconds to dry off, you know, a minute or so, just because I don't like putting the Wet Mod Podge on top of the paper that's on top of Wet Mod Podge, especially with this scrapbook paper. I think I got this from Michaels. It was particularly thin, like very thin. They charge them 69 cents for a piece of paper that's this thin? Not today. But the wood grain paper I got for the side is actually really nice. It was thicker. It held up better to the Mod Podge process. And I'm starting on the side. You never want to start like at the top or in, in the spot that's going to be very visible because we're inevitably going to have seams and I'd rather them either on the side or the bottom. And both of mine end up being on the side. And there's a little variation in color here, so when I get to the scenes where they overlap, you can see where one starts and one ends, but I'm not worried about it. I got to sleep last night. We fine. Yeah, so this wood on the outside went so much better than the inside did. That inside was so bubbly. I think I actually have two layers of paper down because I had to cover the first one up because it looks so bad. Just slapping another little thin layer on, covering that up and rubbing it in. I use my hands a lot with Mod Podge. I think it's just like a tactile thing, like I want to just touch everything. And at the corners right there, you can kind of see, I'm creasing it so I have a nice sharp corner. These are the brushes from Dollar General. I swear, every time I go, it's like, let me grab another pack. They're just gold Tokelon brushes, but I really like them. I think it's because there's a nice variety in the pack. So again, just creasing that a little bit and gluing that down. You don't have to extend it as far as I did, but the edge of the paper was a straighter edge than I could have cut. And now that all that's done, I'm going to seal that edge and then go back and give everything a coat just to lock it in. And the paper's a tiny, tiny bit too big. And I pushed, I made it level with the front of the box. And there's a little extra on the back of the box. And I just pushed that down with my finger. This is a leaf shape from Dollar Tree. I think there's five in a pack for a dollar. I believe that this is one of the ones that's two of them glued together. I do two in this video because I had a mishap, which it's terrible, but we'll get to that. All I'm doing right now is drawing on just some suggestions of where the veins would be. And yes, you are seeing things correctly. I have busted out the fabric puffy paint. This is like 97 cents at Walmart, and I use this really only for this technique, and one of them will last me for, I don't know, the next 10 years. They even had some that were on clearance for 50 cents. I think they were glow in the dark, which you could use that because they're gonna paint over it anyway. But I like the puffy paint because it has some dimension to it. super cheap. 
I used to make t-shirts with this, like iron on transfer books. And you would iron the transfer onto a t-shirt and then paint it and like outline it with the puffy paint and they all look so terrible and I was always trying to sell them. Does anybody remember those iron on transfer books? It was like a giant catalog that had a bunch of teddy bears and stuff. So this is the double one right here. It's already dried, everything's ready to go, and I am just coating it with a layer of the white chalk paint from Waverly. You can do this technique with any color of paint, but I'm trying to get a cracked porcelain look, so I went with stark white. I was tempted to do a cream, but my cream was too yellow. I have a problem with cream too. This is Distress Crackle Paint in Clear Rock Candy. I am not 100% sure they still make this. I ordered it on Amazon, but I couldn't find it in Michaels or Hobby Lobby, and I couldn't find any mention of it on their websites. If you can get this, if you see it somewhere, buy it because it's amazing. This four ounce jar was maybe $7, which it would have been probably 12 at Hobby Lobby had they had it. But the directions are for this are to apply a medium thick coat and they mean it. Just slap that on there. I'm actually not really brushing it in. I'm just kind of using the brush to slap it on. And um, yeah, don't, don't be shy with this. I'm a little shy with it because I want to lie, I want this bottle to last as long as possible. Not that I just can't order another one off of Amazon, but every time I order something off of Amazon, just like the anticipation of waiting for it to get here kills me. So I, I don't want to have to order another one for a long time. And even though I'm putting this on very thick, this will last for a long time. And if you apply a thin coat, you will get bigger cracks. If you apply a thick coat, which is what we're doing, that's how you get the tiny cracks. Like grazing that you would see on porcelain or like ironstone. I did just scrape a bunch of that off my cutting mat. I'm putting it back in the jar where it belongs. Now get ready for this. Here's my frame. That's cute, we put some paper on it, we painted it gold, all right, whatever. We're tired of looking at this now. Put it down, put it down. Good, what else you got? Wait, oh, okay, we got this little wood piece we kept. Oh, wait, wait, look at it, wait for it. The camera does not do this justice, it's amazing. This is the coolest product I've ever worked with. I first tried it like 10 years ago when it came out and I was just like mind blown. What is this? How's it working? The paint is not cracked. All that cracking is in the coat that we put on top. And I have a little clip on the side that I took with my phone in different light so maybe you could see it better, but camera, useless at this point. There's no point in trying to show you the texture this has, the gloss it has. It's really, really good. So this, um, we're not going to talk about it. Just don't worry, but don't look at this. Just, you know, we're just going to go through it. Nobody needs to be worried about what's going on. Not a big deal. Let's pretend like that never happened. Oh, oh no, let's try to fix, no. Okay, don't, don't worry about that. That was nothing. But now for some reason we have two of them. The one on the right has one layer of the crackle. The one on the left that I'm showing right now has two layers. You can't see the puffy paint as much, but I like the crackle on the one with two layers better. And see at the top right there, you can kind of see how the paint separated. That separated not because of the crackle, but because I put the crackle on when the paint was not 100% dry. So I'm going to go with the thicker one because I like the way that looks. And this is just assembly at this point. See, I'm trying to decide. I know which one I'm going to use. It's going to be the thicker one that looks better. And drop it because I'm a Butterfingers. Now y'all know I'm thinking about, am I going to get this in here straight? Because that happens every time I record a video. And instead of attempting anything, I glued the back little wood piece to the back of the leaf. That way, I can get it in the box, wiggle it around if I need to, and I don't have to get it straight in like one shot. So, excuse my head. 
So there it is. Oh, it's a little crooked. Fix that. There we go. Push it down. And that's it. I really just wanted to show you guys how to use this Distress Crackle Glaze. It's, it's awesome. You can do so much with it. And it makes anything look like tile, a porcelain. You can put it over paper. You can put it on anything. It's awesome. And that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I tried to get some good shots with my phone and mess with the saturation and the sharpness to show you how many cracks there are, but this is the best I could do. Please consider liking, subscribing, commenting, following me on Instagram, all that good stuff. See you guys later. Bye. Hi everybody, today I'm trying my best to make a milk glass inspired pumpkin, faux milk glass. You can't really get the translucency of milk glass using paint, but we tried. This project took me five days to get from a pumpkin and some pearls to finally a finished pumpkin. It was mostly user error, lots of products not performing the way they should have. If you make this, be warned that it is very hard to get those pearls to stick to a ceramic pumpkin. I know I showed the E6000, I don't end up using that, I end up using Loctite Super Glue. But I've got the Dollar Tree pumpkin, some flat back pearls, an adhesive, and the little pen on the side is a We Are Memory Keepers quick stick. It just has a little, like the blue putty tack to put up posters in the tip and it sticks to the top of the pearl so you can pick them up easily. If you don't want to buy one of those, you can always get like an orange stick for your cuticles or a skewer or even a toothpick and just put some of the sticky tack on the end of it. But not having something to pick up those pearls was one of the first problems I had because they're tiny and I just couldn't grab them with my fingers. And this was the pumpkin from Dollar Tree with the gold stem. It doesn't have a gold stem in this picture because at this point, I have glued all the pearls on. They've all fallen off twice. And I've removed all the chalk paint, spray paint, and sealer that I put on top of this. To get back to this raw pumpkin to redo this video again. I actually have a companion video coming out to this that deals with everything that was going on while I was trying to make this because I, I just feel like it's important to encourage people who are having a hard time with something that you can stick to it and I'm just putting these on and now I'm moving them around to get them perfect but it doesn't matter because the E6000 doesn't stick I ended up using five pearls on each section, so 50 total. And I just sped this up really fast so you could at least see where everything was going. The first version of this actually used two different sizes of pearls, which I really liked, but that was not meant to be. So that's it, just keep adding them until it looks like a little sea urchin or something. I'm just cleaning up the excess glue on the outside. Not that it matters, because the glue doesn't work. I'm slightly bitter about that. Has everybody realized that I'm slightly bitter about that? It looks like there's only four in there. I could have sworn I used five. Yeah, I did. So here's the pumpkin all done. I have gone back and super glued everyone on with the Loctite. You don't have any time to move them around once you put that on there, which is why I didn't want to use super glue to begin with, but it's fun. They're not perfect anymore, but at least they're stuck. 
This little green thing is just a quilling tool that I'm using as a holder when I put the pumpkin down. And it was important here to go every direction I could. I went up and down, back and forth, diagonally, because you have to get the pumpkin paint and you have to get all of the pearl painted too. I did start off with chalk paint, but it was it was not treating me right, so I ended up going outside and spray painting it. So the next time you see it, it will be spray painted. You could start off with spray paint. That would probably be the smarter thing to do. And here it is, all painted. Everything's looking pretty good. And I'm applying a thick coat of Mod Podge Super Gloss. And there's a fly or a gnat or something that's been, I swear, this is the same gnat that's been buzzing around my head for the past week. Again, back and forth, up and down, trying to cover everything. The super gloss gives it a really, really shiny finish, and it locks any of those pearls in that may try to think of escaping. So here it is. All shiny. I wish I could have gotten it translucent looking like milk glass, but there's only so much you can do with paint and sealer. But I do like it. It came out really good. So I want to thank you guys for watching. This video was a beast. But I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you can make something with it. Please remember to like, comment, subscribe, turn on notifications, share with your friends, follow me on Instagram, and have a good day. Bye.